Hello guys, I hope you're fine. It's been a while since I've posted any video in here, like five months ago. I mean, quite a lot right now. And also, I didn't have the opportunity to wish you a happy new year. So, happy new year, guys. Happy new year! Uh, and, uh, yeah, I know I'm late and I don't care. So let's maybe talk about uh, what we can actually do with the Blader V2. I mean, how we can actually unlock some um, channel's abilities. I don't know if you remember, but back nine years ago, you could actually see the version one of the Blade Earth, which was actually capable of also monitoring 124 megahertz of bandwidth using over sampling. We'll talk about it later. But yeah, uh, it was kind of impressive because you could actually do like a very large observation. Still, I mean, this is like pros, but also cons that I will also talk about later. But let's maybe stay on, you know, awesome facts. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is this. There, there was like a post about it um, before. Uh, of course, you know that uh, before Bl the Blader V1 was only capable of actually, um, you know, capturing a 24 megahertz uh, bandwidth. So it's actually the bandwidth as is maximum uh, bandwidth that you can actually capture. Uh, and the Blader 2.0 micro is actually uh, able to do the double. So as it's actually able to do the double. You can, I mean, there's like much more possibilities, but you will see that uh, doing the unlock that I will actually tell you about uh, will be able to actually observe 134, uh, 28 megahertz bandwidth instead. So not as last as we thought, but yeah, still, uh, this is also uh, another. I mean, the the issue that we 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 have mainly is the interface that you know uh, is quite also slow. Uh, compared, for example, to other interfaces like PCE or MPC or uh, or even the uh, 10 gigabits Ethernet. So still, we're a little bit limited about that. Uh, so, I mean, don't be, I mean, maybe too pushy. I mean, don't ask too much uh, to this uh, SDR. It is good, still good uh, that we can actually uh, unlock these kind of things. But uh, we will see that we will have also cons. Uh, in terms of uh, resolution, because in terms of resolutions, uh, we we see we know that, for example, for RX and TX, uh, we can actually uh, have a resolution of 12 bits, which is quite conventional, you know, with uh, the uh, the the ADC and the AC that we can have. Uh, I mean, that we have generally uh, implemented in the market on our SDRs, but um, yeah, uh, it's still. I mean, you, you can still find better, like uh, 16 bits, etc. But yeah, still, if we stay about that, we should also know that if uh, we unlock the 128 megahertz, uh, we'll also, I mean, uh, downgrade uh, the, the resolution. So, but I mean, this kind of thing can be good actually to monitor, to do some large monitoring on a large bandwidth. And then uh, once we know exactly what are the possible bandwidth we are in, we are actually interested in? We can actually focus in it with the high resolution instead. So let's do that. All right. So let's go back to the table and now see how we can actually do that. How we can actually unlock these possibilities. So um, yeah, here's the uh, um, blade rough. Let's do some applications. For the moment, the oversampling feature is not in its uh, stable version yet. So you will have to uh, actually download a FPGA image in its alpha version or 15 uh, all version for the moment. And also you will have also to install some modules that are de developed by Nuant. But these uh, features are not, are not actually, uh, I mean, you cannot find it easily on Git. When you go, for example, to the BladeRF uh, repository, you will see pretty, Pretty much a lot of things. Uh, first of all, you will see also some repository uh, that are uh, you know, quite common to uh, GR or Spice GR, but developed by uh, Nuand in order to just have like uh, you know another working version of uh, GR or Spice GR with the latest BladeRF uh, Blade library. But yeah, if you look at for example the branches, 
all the branches are not yet uh, synchronized with this other sample feature that I want to show you. So generally what you want to do is just like to uh, find the dev uh, set feature, which is a little bit hidden. Uh, wait a second. Up. Set like that. And here you will see, you know, a commit that is not belonging to any branches. So um, you will have to actually download the zip directly and then uh, use the GR uh, Osmois gear that is applicable for the Blade RF. Once you do that, you will be able to set uh, the parameters that I will also show you thereafter. Um, also, to avoid you any you know, issue installing all the things, I also prepared you like a small Docker container uh, so you can actually test it quickly uh, on your computer. And uh, you will see that you will be able to do that because, I mean, it's like, it will be like a little bit painful. I mean, uh, also long to, to, to install all the things. Uh, and especially if you, for example, you run already uh, some modules, uh, like for example, the GR or small SDR module, uh, you know, the official one. So if you don't want to, I mean, to just mess with all your setup, I mean, you can actually download the uh, Docker container that I have made for you. So the Docker container made for you is also available in the description, just, uh, be, I mean, just under this video and you will be able to follow all this manipulation that I'm doing. Oh yeah, the version of the Docker container you will get will be a little bit different from this one. I mean, a little bit clean, a little bit. Uh, and first we need to actually uh, load uh, the bitstream uh, of the FPGA. Uh, so let's do that. So we'll just like use PBOMs, for example, for my uh, Blade RF, it will be the uh, hosted XA9 RBF. So, uh, yeah, also there's like no device attached. So I will just make sure that my device is attached. So let's go on in here. So, wait a second. Just make sure that also you have attached it using a USB 3 interface because, I mean, if not, you will have troubles. And then you can actually just wait until the uh, the blader becomes ready, like that. Or in FPGA, and then we can launch. I mean, generate your companion. So now let's see how we can actually test it. Um, for the beginning, we will actually use one blade earth. I mean, the first blade earth, which is connected to our USB interface. Then we'll actually downgrade uh, the uh, resolution to 8 bits, which is not quite good because, I mean, if the signal is weak, uh, I mean, we will not see it. So yeah, uh, I mean, this is one of the artifacts we can, we can actually face also. I mean, having a bad resolution, also you can miss a lot of information. Uh, the feature will, uh, that will be used is the other sample, so we can actually specify it in here. And so using this feature, we can actually use much more samples. I mean, uh, this is the, the thing that is actually in here. We can use much more samples that is actually restricted for the blade RF. So uh, I've already told you about the limits of the blade RF, V2 and V1. And so for the V2, for example, if you don't use this feature, it will be, I mean, a little bit restricted. And also with the uh, the main, I mean, the, the official version of a GR or small SDR, if you use this version instead of the one of Nuant, you will be also uh, limited. So that's why also we are using the Nuant versions instead. So now we have actually do, I mean, do all the modification. We can actually just use the frequency, which is a little bit in the border, maybe a little bit far from the borders. So I would just like, you know, did like a, a little, little calculation, but very, uh, very, I mean, very quick. And now we can actually launch that, like that, and see. So as you can see, for example, in here, we have in here, as you can see, 120 megahertz bandwidth, which is quite great. I mean, nothing crashed. I mean, um, GNU Radio didn't complain. That's cool, right? So now let's see if we can actually see our uh, data. So if I'm pushing the button, you can see that, for example, the max hold will actually see something happening in here. So I can... Actually, maybe just increase that. I can see like this little signal, but yeah, still, even if the uh, the RF, uh, I mean, in here, the RF gain is at 20, I can always increase it a little bit, but I mean, as the res resolution is not very good, I mean, still in the border, 
uh, I mean, it's not quite uh, relevant, but if we just try to increase, we can, for example, see the button push in here. So that's great, right? I mean, now we have we are able to actually sniff and to monitor a large bandwidth, 120 gigahertz bandwidth. I tried also because I mean, uh, when I got also the the message from Nuand, they told me that actually it can unlock 128 megahertz channels. So I didn't actually understand specifically what that means because I mean, for me it was like maybe the wall band in the wall uh, sample rates. Uh, so I had I had tried also the 128 megahertz first like that. I mean, uh, but maybe they didn't mean uh, this. So, so I probably just we can maybe just like use lower values. Let's say 20, 125 still does not work. So I just tried with 120. I mean, it's okay. It's like a, one of the maximum value that we can actually use to sniff a large 120 megahertz bandwidth, which is quite great because I mean, if you remember, I mean, uh, for for this kind of purpose generally. Um, I know that the, the resolution is quite bad, but still, I mean, it's quite good also to monitor a large bandwidth. So like that, then you can focus, you can just decrease a little bit the, uh, I mean, you can uh, increase the uh, the resolution and then decrease the sample rate in order to focus on your signal once you got something interesting. Uh, so yeah, still, the problem that you use also a weak resolution will affect the signal that you're receiving. So if you, the, the signal is weak, still, I mean, it, it, it does not help, but you can actually, um, I mean, get it around using, for example, some other techniques like LNA or other stuff. If you want to actually see the signal run, uh, it's it's true that, for example, if you're using it for uh, to maybe spot implants around the place or something, your search is not the, the the best thing. But I mean, still, I mean, it has the merit to exist. Uh, to it is like um, it is an, a feature that unlocks the ability to actually see what is happening in a large band. And then you can combine a lot of things, like for example, you can use a waterfall, uh, I mean, and then you can actually use it uh, against the large band like that. I mean, it's quite great. So you can see what is happening. Uh, and I mean, it's quite interesting. I mean, yeah, I had also the waterfall in here, but yeah, I wanted also to see it with the FFT as well. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of a nice feature you uh, we get in here. And so I hope you liked it. Uh, still, I mean, there's like still some other tools that performs that. I mean, I can maybe show you other, uh, other cool things that uh, you can actually see with other tools as well. But if you attend to actually um, use it, for example, for scanning a large frequency to spy, I mean, to look also for some bugs, generally prefer to use maybe some real time uh, SDR, like for example, the Spectron, so the Signal Hound, which have also very good resolutions and also allows you to do a lot of things, uh, especially also showing some nice um, videos image. And you have probably been familiar with these kind of images, I mean, with a lot of things, uh, some nice 3D features like this one, for example. And some features like this one, for example, uh, where you can actually sweep to a very large set of frequency, which is kind of a cool feature to have, for example, to spot to some weird communications within a large burns and when you don't have like a lot of time trying to just hop to some frequency with the SDR. But for small budget possible, if you don't you don't have the money to acquire like a next version of the USP or the Spectron or the Signal Hound, etc. I mean this kind of feature can do like a lot, for example, if you don't know exactly where you want to look at, still the signal, I mean if the signal is weak as I said, I mean it's not the best conditions. All right, so this is the end of this video. I hope you like it. And I promise you that in the next couple of days, I will be able also to show you some other tricks and also some other SDRs because I have some other things to share. But yeah, still, I mean, um, the time is also missing. Um, if you want to also subscribe to my channel, just you know, subscribe to it. I mean, you are welcome to, to do that. Also, thumbs up. I mean, to encourage also this channel. And uh, I mean, also show, maybe see you in one of the events uh, that I will also participate, like for example, some conferences, uh, like for example, Hardware.io, uh, there will be also um, um, Hack in the Box, also Black Hats. So yeah, you're welcome to also uh, come and talk to me, also participate to one of my trainings. Thank you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.